So honestly, I wasn't going to film KatsuCon, but I was already there, so I figured why not. I uh, didn't take any um, horizontal videos on the first day. I was just going to do shorts at first, and the second day I was like, you know what, I might as well just make an actual video. Why not? First day we got there, we drove up, checked into our hotel, which was the Comfort Inn in Oxen Hill. It's about a 10 minute drive from the Gaylord. We uh, Ubered over there, which was about $12 each way, I think. spend all day at the convention center and then come back at night. The Comfort Inn wasn't really that great of a hotel. It had a really strong chemical smell and the bathroom was laid out really weirdly, but the beds were fine and the room seemed pretty clean, unlike some other places that I've stayed in. I went with two of my friends, Michelle and Noah. One of the things Michelle had been really looking forward to was doing the maid cafe. Uh, people dressed up in like maid and butler outfits. I wasn't exactly sure what to expect from this experience. I wasn't really hoping for that much. I was pleasantly surprised to see that there were vegan options on the menu. So I actually had a really good time. We were super hungry because we weren't able to get a reservation beforehand. So we kind of just got in and scarfed everything down. But they do the maid cafe to raise money for a charity, which I can't remember at this moment. But there's different things you can do like for a certain amount, they'll play games with you or they'll let you take as many pictures as you want, which is the one that I ended up doing. I think that was like $15, but we did have a really good time. They also um, put out a little show and sang for us while we were in there. Mostly what we did for the entire KatsuCon was just walk around, look at costumes, the do the artist alley and the merchant hall. I'm the one 
Like I full on was like We also did a few panels. I didn't really like most of the discussions they had. My first experience with Katsukon was actually in 2012. I think this is the 2012 one. February 17th to 19th and the card was this cute little anime girl. I got this and this when I was there and then I went two years later 2014 the 14th to 16th uh, card's not that cute this time around. So I hadn't been to Katsukana in 10 years. I don't think it's changed that much, honestly. I The one thing I do remember is liking a lot of the panels um, from 10 years ago, but the availability and who does what panels is based on who wants to do them and what Katsukon approves. So that could be one thing. I remember there being like a tea ceremony that I really wanted to go to uh, that I wasn't able to, and of course they didn't have it this year. And I believe the difference between Artist Alley and Merchant Hall is that Artist Alley is for people who like make things with their hand. Merchant's Hall is more of stuff that you could like import like they've got a bunch of DVDs, they've got um, clothing that probably wouldn't be made by hand but probably could be. Um, I personally like Artist Alley more. That's where I got the little things that I just showed you. There were a couple panels that we did go to. There was one for Lolita Fashion uh, which is a specific type of clothing in Japan which is based on modesty uh, but also trying to be like cute. If you want to buy and experience Lolita at Katsukon, uh, check out the dealer's woman, you'll know that clothes and clothing sizes mean nothing. Yep. You can be a 10 in one brand or a 16 in another and who, and you're a medium with them or an XL for them and it's just like, oh my goodness gracious. And there's a book called Lolita. I've never read it, but apparently there's some like pedophilic themes in it. Uh, which has done a lot of done a lot of damage to the Lolita community because it's not uh, anything harmful. It's just a cute way that people dress. Uh, there were other panels like um, uh, Japanese music. I was for Imperial World to Emperor Meiji. This, at the same time, like introduces a lot of the Western world into Japan, which have previously been super close up until now. This is kind of when we see like Western influence start to come in. So we have the Western musical scales or the Nomi Choshi. These previously had not been reflected in Japanese music until now. Experience with J-pop, right? Like Pop 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 comes out and everyone's like, look at that weird little girl dancing with talking heads and candy and singing about something. It's really catchy. Everyone's like, okay, cool. And it really kind of um, I would say also like a lot of anime fans slept with that, like they were really into it, so that also was in Carrie's career. We did one that was like a game show based on anime. I didn't really enjoy that one and I'm not sure if it's because I didn't like the panel or because the room was set up really weirdly. It was like this super long room and the screen was like set up over here and like all of the people over here, which is where I was sitting, could not see anything that was going on. So I didn't really have a good time with that, but Michelle uh, was sitting closer to the screen, so she was like having the time of her life. We didn't go to the opening ceremony, but at the end of the weekend, we did go to the closing ceremony. On the schedule, it said it was gonna be an hour, so I was like, I'm just gonna record a little bit. I'm not gonna do everything. And then it ended up only being like five minutes. That means I'm the second in charge, and right next to me is our chairperson, uh, Beth, and she is a real great, real great teacher. So first and foremost, thank you guys for coming to CatchCon 2024. Uh, it has been an amazing year this year. I, it was nice to come out of retirement. Uh, so that's the main thing here is uh, I see I came out of retirement for this year. 
Uh, so, without further ado, we had 23,076 memberships sold this year. Thank you guys so much. Um, I feel like this is a comfortable number, and I will state publicly here, we will be capping the building next year. So, make sure you buy your badges and pre reds And I did kind of hint around, oh, there it is, best go ahead. So, uh, this year tried something different. I pulled my staffers for the theme, and next year's theme is Japanese horror. Whoa. All right, that's kind of a good response. And please note that we had over a hundred more staffers vote for Japanese horror than anything else. It was the vast majority out of 900 staff. They wanted horror for next year, and it excited us tremendously. Uh, they are called Leet Speak Monsters. And uh, we're gonna go to the next slide. We should have a picture of them, right? Right? I think so. Not right now? Not right now. No picture. Uh, there's a picture. There we go. So, we actually reached out to the band and they did something very unique and amazing for us. And we're gonna go ahead and play you guys uh, something of theirs real quick. So, enjoy. <laughs> in six years and we have brought them for their U.S. debut. For some reason we really like doing that here with Zsa, Zsa this year and now we're uh, doing it again with Beat Speak Monsters next year. We will post... Yeah, we will, we'll, pour, we'll pour some more guests soon. I know that was a big feedback item in the last panel. Uh, we do plan on posting guests tremendously earlier this year. They will not all be bum-rushed in the last month before convention this year. And uh, we, again, without... We really appreciate you guys. We love everything that you guys bring to this event. Without you, we would not be here. Uh, Beth and I are tremendously humbled by this massive amount of people that love and bring such great fandom to us. And uh, if you ever need anything, feel free to reach out to Katsukon at the contact at katsukon.org email. It is actively monitored, and we uh, look forward to hearing from you guys soon. Have a great week, and I hope you had a great weekend at Katsukon this weekend. Thank you. And then after that, we just went home. Could be 
wrong about the hours, but I think it's like 10 to early morning on Friday and then Saturday and then Sunday is only open till like three. Just to go in and walk around the hotel, I don't believe you need a badge. I think you just go in, but if you wanna go into like the panels or the artist areas, you do need a badge. I had a really great time. I'm hoping to go again next year and like really dress up this time because the cosplays I had were, the first day I just borrowed some of Michelle's uh, Studio Ghibli clothes. And then I had a Kim Possible inspired outfit. And then on Sunday, I just kind of had a dress from Captain Marvel that I bought at Disney when I worked there. And I had a uh, jacket and boots over it. Not super involved. Michelle and Noah dressed up as two characters from Free Rin Beyond Hero's Journey or something like that. I haven't seen it. Uh, they want me to dress up uh, with them next year, so we'll see about that. I did buy uh, some stuff here. I brought $200 in cash and that was all I was allowed to spend. I ended up not using $14, so I think I did pretty well. This was a booth I kept going back to. I can't remember the name. I also bought a sticker pack for Michelle there, but it's got this cute little cat, this really nice uh, skyline. I did buy a couple more things for Michelle for like Christmas and her birthday. Um, I bought like a, a Water Tribe pin and then some uh, car decals, which I don't have. More things that I bought for me. I have this wallet with a fox on it. This was in Merton's Hall. I think it was like $28. The poster was probably 25-ish. Um, I have my chicken tramper wallet that I use for everything. It's not really that great because it's got like card slots and all this stuff in here. I don't really like carrying things. Um, so I bought this little, I don't know what it's called, leash. You can hook onto this. Hopefully that will not damage the zipper. But this I think was like $12. So it's kind of carrying, but I can also just like whatever, and whack people with it. I bought these two little crocheted animals. This one's a ghost. This one's an axolotl. I love crocheted animals. I have a little turtle and a jellyfish, which you can't see because they're way, way back there. bought this Jurassic Park pin that says Clever Girl. I don't know where this came from, but I have a sticker. I also bought this mystery pack. I I love mystery packs. I love things that you open, find out what's in there. Okay, we've got a little duck pin. A duck sticker. Cat in a box. Oh, Sharky. We've got a little ball with an acorn hat and a Pikachu. I think that's it. Oh, just kidding. There's more. You're one in a melon. Queen bee. And a paw print. Something which I had never known about was uh, ribbons. This one came from the place where I bought the uh, crochet animals from. And then we got this one because we voted for the Carolina Manga Library in Project for Awesomes. Uh, I don't know if it was like a giveaway or something, something that was supposed to help them. I've never known about the ribbon thing before because I apparently wasn't paying attention 10 years ago, but this was the one for this year. I don't know what anime this was supposed to be. I just used this lanyard that I got when I worked at Disney. So you just take this, you peel it off, and then you stick it on the back here. Then you have a little ribbon on it and you can add more than one or you can like put them on the side. Pretty much whatever you want to do with it. I saw some people that had like, like this many cards. 
Uh, I'm hoping to do that next year because it looks fun. I just have to figure out where to get them from. Both of these are from Marcos, so that might be a good place to start. Thank you for watching. I know this wasn't uh, my usual content, so hopefully you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.